It's no secret that App Router is really cool, but also it wasn't quite ready for us to adopt. I've been using App Router in all my projects recently, and as cool as it is, I've missed Create T3 App a lot. And that's why we've put a lot of effort in to make Create T3 App finally support App Router. We've been taking our time with this because we wanted to make sure the App Router rollout both made sense and gave users a good experience while also not compromising on the modularity and customizability of Create T3 app directly. We love TRPC, we love NextAuth, we love Prisma, we love Drizzle, we love all these other pieces. And we wanted to make sure we didn't compromise on that while introducing App Router as an option. We also wanted to make sure we didn't hurt the users who are still preferring Page Router because the harsh reality is most projects are still started with Page Router and I don't see that changing anytime soon. So we went out of our way to strike a balance, make sure that both the Page Router experience and the App Router experience were great. And it's honestly Honestly unfair for me to say we, because I did basically nothing but play with it. This was all on Julius, CJE, and a little bit of help from Nexel too. The team absolutely killed it on this release. I'm so hyped on the new app router support in Create T3 app, and I can't wait to show it off a little bit now. Let's take a look. I'm going to use BunX just because it's fast. Create T3 app at latest. App router demo. TypeScript, of course. Tailwind, of course. TRPC, yes. Not going to use NextAuth because I personally use Clerk a little bit more now. Another cool thing we added, we support Drizzle directly, which is huge. Big Drizzle fan, not using Prisma as much lately. So having that there is another option. It's really nice. Obviously, this all increases the maintenance burden a lot on the core team, but they're killing it with it. I like to use the app router. Yes, 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 yes. And in just a moment, we'll now have a scaffolded project using app router. We can hop over, take a look. This is app router. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff in here that we don't necessarily need. I will quickly set this up so I can show y'all. I think since I use Drizzle, and by default, we're using Drizzle through the PlanetScale HTTP driver, that I'm going to have to go create a driver for this really quick while we wait for that. So one of the cool things you might see here is that we're actually awaiting from API, which might seem strange because we can just run the backend code here. But this is a really cool pattern where you're able to make a TRPC router and call it inside of server components, which prevents you from having to use like hooks and all of those things to access it. You can still do that if you want to. Like if I wanted to make this a traditional React component that runs on client, instead of being a server component, I'd be able to use this with the hooks. I don't even know if we're exposing the React helpers by default anymore. TRPC React is here, so let's see. Oh yeah, we still expose it, yeah. So we have TRPC React API as well as the TRPC server API. So now we can just same way as always API post create use mutation, but we can also on the server components API post hello dot query. So this isn't a hook. This is a promise that you will wait so on the server side. You can do that and on the client side. You can do different things, which makes it possible to expose both behaviors in one place, which is really nice DB push. So one of the cool little things that we're doing by default now, I have a whole video where I've been planning for a while where I'm going to go over this more in detail. For those aren't familiar, Drizzle's an ORM, not too dissimilar from Prisma. The big differences are it's a little more minimal, it's entirely TypeScript based, and they've added a handful of niceties that make our lives as developers much easier. The big one that I really like is prefixes. What's a prefix? If you're around for the WordPress days, you're familiar with prefixes and databases. Unless you have one database that does lots of different things for lots of different projects. The cool thing with using a prefix in Drizzle is you can now have one database with multiple different Drizzle projects on it. So if you only have one free database with PlanetScale, you can use that database for like 15 different projects at once, trivially, which is actually really nice and convenient. And when you do things like the db push command, it's only going to update the things with that prefix now, which is great. I've had a really good experience using pre fixes with Drizzle to have one database cover lots of projects and I have to spin up a new project every time I want to do something quick. So I've liked this a lot. It's made my life much easier as a dev that has lots of different projects. And now you have this opportunity too. really cool. And the other big thing with Drizzle, this is all defined in TypeScript now. This isn't a separate schema file that exists in a separate like syntax in a file that has to be parsed, converted, and lots of other things done to it. This is just TypeScript. And now this TypeScript can be used to do lots of different things. Like again, if I bun run dev, and here we are, new post. My most recent post is new post, dope. And we see here all the queries coming through. And if I wanted to show all of the posts, instead of just that one post, we can make that endpoint quick. It's going to command click here. And now we have all the procedures. We have get latest. Let's just do get all public procedure dot query. Return ctx dot db dot query dot posts dot find many. And now if I go back here to be able to const all posts equals await api dot post dot get all dot query. And now I have all the posts. Going to delete all the contents here and get in the way a bit. And now I can all posts dot map post return div post dot 
name. This needs a key, so I'll give it key equals post.id. And now, new post, it's right there. And if I want more, Fred Showcase, more posts, even more posts, all handled directly using TRPC. Really nice. That said, you don't have to use TRPC if you don't want to. I'll quickly convert this to not use TRPC. So first, I don't need the link anymore. We don't need that anymore either. First, let's get these posts without TRPC. It's actually pretty easy. We're using the context for the DB here, which isn't necessary. I'll just yoink this, paste this here, import DB, and now this should still work. Yeah. And if I want to remove the other side, the actual post, is where things are going to get a tiny bit more complex because we have to first and foremost update the next config to support experimental server actions. But now that that's updated, I can make async function create post. This will be use server in order to let the compiler know what it's doing. Once again, let's just go rip the code. It's easier. Whatever create post is doing. PI post create. Oh, we have this simulated thousand milliseconds. That's why that was so slow. That makes sense. We won't bother simulating that here though. CTXDB insert. Well, it's not context DB anymore. Input name string. If type of input dot name is not equal string, throw new error, not a string. Since we don't have Zod in server actions land, we have to manually validate things. I could do a Zod validator here, but I'm being very lazy. So now that we have that, this actually needs to be done in this, which is a different component. So I'll just move that over to there. That'll be easier. You like this function, hop over to create post. Oh, it's use client. So let's make a new file, um, post action, export async function, import DB, import posts. And now I can set the action for this to be create post, which it should have been able to find from here and does not like that for some reason. Import create post from dot slash post action. Name equals name. Oh, interesting. There's a bind functionality. Now this is new. I haven't seen this. I still don't know why this is so mad. Oh, because it has to be form data as the type. Is that why? And this I can give name string, right? No. What the fuck? This is why I don't like this. <laughs> yeah, there's no happy TypeScript story yet. I have to do input.get for that. As you can tell, I don't use form data on servers often. Let's grab this first then. Const new post name. This is a really good showcase of why I like TRPC so much. Cool. Now that should stop complaining. That I don't care about anymore. Don't really need any of this anymore. The disabled state I probably should do, but I'm lazy, so we're not going to do that just yet. But now this will work. There's one thing I intentionally forgot though, and I'll show you in just a second. TRPC free post. Submit. And it seems like nothing's happening, but if I refresh, you'll see it's there. So what happened? Well, it didn't have any reason to reload the page after the action because we didn't give it one. We can do though is revalidate path slash here. And since we're doing this now in the post action, one more post. That's actually one other little thing that I really like about Create T3 app compared to other solutions is the ESLint config is significantly stricter and it makes my life much better. Every time it gives me shit, it's giving me shit for the right reasons. Yeah, that did it. Some weird incompatibility with revalidation in server actions and TRPC on server side. Somebody said, shouldn't I router.refresh? I can do router refresh, but it's nice to have the server in the same request send the updated HTML. When it does the revalidate path, if I recall correctly, I'll check the network tab to be sure about this. It actually sends the updated content. Send updated content, hop over to the network tab. And that post call, this guy, I believe came with the additional content in it. Yeah, because the only other things we got was a font and a layout revalidate for um, CSS. So this post that we made actually had the data in it to update the content of the page, which is really, really cool that I don't have to do a post, wait for the response, and then do another request. Getting all the data back in a single request is actually a really cool pattern. It's similar to, hate to say it, HTMX. It's really cool though. And I see why this pattern is being pushed the way it is. Didn't clear this after, which is annoying to do. But again, like as I hope I have showcased here, server actions are early. And that's why we're still defaulting to TRPC for a lot of this stuff, because it's not too hard to move off it. You just rip the functions and you can reuse them, which is dope. But 
you'll have different things you have to worry about. I'm really happy overall. This is so much better an experience. And I think I'm finally done with Create Next App because all of the things I missed from Create Next App are in here. Small stuff like a proper prettier config that uses the Tailwind CSS plugin. Things like ESLint being set up properly with really strict but reasonable rules to make your dev experience better. Things like the TS config itself being a little bit stricter and having stuff like no unchecked index access on by default, which is really nice. Plus having Drizzle set up instantly for me where I can just drop an environment variable and run the db push command, having really nice stuff like db studio set up too, which I haven't actually tried. Let's give it a shot. Bun run db studio, yoink. Yeah, this is dope. And having all of this built in by default as part of my getting started is reasonable. And none of it's huge. I find that a lot of these starters come with a ton of bloat. Like they have like 50 test files or they have a ton of pages with lots of different stuff on them. We only have one page by default. And it's a really simple showcase of all the different parts. Our server is also very simple. We have a single router that just shows you some examples of what creating posts and reading things from your database with TRPC looks like. We also have a basic example both on the server and on the client of accessing TRPC so that you can use your TRPC both in your React components, the traditional client side way, as well as on the server and share a lot of your logic between the two. Really powerful. I am very, very happy with the overall experience I have been having using Create T3 app, especially now that we have app router support. So if you haven't already given us a star, definitely consider it 20.5K stars now, which is huge. I I'm so hyped with what's been going on with Create T3 app. I am beyond pumped about the hard work the team's done. This is actually a big thing. I'm no longer in the top row of contributors. Huge shout out to all of the contributors for making this possible. Julius absolutely led the charge. Nexels, OG legend, original creator of Create T3 app and has continued to help since. We got CJ, Christopher Elric, recently joined Axiom. Been killing it over there, still helping us here too. GitHub bot, obviously, the OG legend. Don't know how much Michael's been helping, but he's still a legend, helped us out a ton early. We got Ayanava as well. I don't remember what specifically you contributed. If I recall, you helped a lot with the localization stuff. Regardless, we appreciate you a ton. And all the other contributors, 265 of them. Absolute legends. Thank you all so much for the help. I couldn't be more hyped on Create T3 app. And now that it has app router support, it's really nice to be using it every day again. I do actually build all my projects with app router and I was building them all with Create T3 app. So we're back to it. Couldn't be more hyped. How about y'all though? Have you started a project with Create T3 app? Are you on app router yet? If you want to hear a bit more about why I'm so hyped on these new server component patterns, check out the video here all about it. YouTube also thinks you're going to like the video below right there. So check that out too if you haven't. Thank you guys as always. Really appreciate y'all. Peace nerds.